Hey everyone, I'm going to demonstrate for you a running locking suture. Okay, it's different than a simple interrupted suture in that it's a continuous suture. You only cut it at the ends rather than cutting it with each knot because there are only two knots with this technique. So let me show you. So first of all, it actually starts with a simple interrupted suture. So let me place that quickly. If you uh, would like some explanation or instruction on how to perform a simple interrupted suture, please check out my video on simple interrupted suturing. So this uh, type of a running suture can be very uh, nice and handy actually for some simple, very simple uh, lacerations or incisions that are small, okay? It's not going to work well for large lacerations or jagged lacerations, but if it's a very small, simple laceration, or uh, for example, in the clinic, if you remove, uh, if you do like a lipoma and remove a lipoma, this can be a very nice little uh, uh, suture at the end of that. So now notice the difference here that with a simple interrupted, I would have cut both of those and then started a new suture altogether. But for a running suture, a running locking suture like I'm going to show you now, we're going to leave this end intact so that we can continue on. Continue on. Um, but normally my, my knots will end up over on the right side because I'm right-handed and most people doing a simple interrupted will throw it onto the right. But for this, I'm going to pull my knot actually over onto this left side. Okay, and that'll be, uh, the reason for that will become apparent here in just a second. So then your next move is to do another throw, another pass through the patient's skin, uh, but you're going to be doing it uh, very similarly to a, a simple interrupted, okay? Just the exact same as what you just did. Now, lots of mistakes are made when people are making a continuous suture and they'll place the part that goes through the patient's skin at an angle rather than perpendicular. But you see, when you tighten up the suture in this case, it's going to try to tighten like this. And then it's going to bunch up the skin. It's not going to heal well at all. So a very key point to a continuous or a running suture is you need to make sure that the part of the suture that's passing through the patient's body is perpendicular to the laceration so that it pulls straight across. Any part of your continuous suture that is diagonal needs to be the part that's outside of the skin. Okay, so our, our next throw here, again, 90 degrees. Make sure that you're doing it in a very similar way as that first throw that you just did. Okay, and notice how I went perpendicular to the laceration. Now the difference here with other continuous, this with the locking continuous, is I'm going to uh, make sure that with this loop, notice this loop that's made with my residual suture, I wanna pull my, my needle up through this loop. Okay, rather than pulling it up here, I want to pull it up through this loop. Okay, now you'll see what that does. As I pull this tight, it creates a little bit of a self-locking mechanism. See that? And you'll see as we continually do that down this laceration, it's going to uh, keep it all locked together nicely. Now it might loosen up while you go to the next throw and that's just fine because these are really simple to tighten as you go. So we're gonna go with another throw here. Okay. And again, as we pull this through, we wanna make sure that we're pulling it through that loop rather than outside of that loop. It's going to lock it down. Okay, see how that's working? Now I'm using a really big suture for the purpose of the video. This is a, a 3.0 proline, but if you're going to be doing a, a simple, excuse me, a running locking like this, it's oftentimes best to do it when it's such a small, simple little laceration or incision uh, that you're really looking for minimal scarring. Now. If you have another person helping you, for example, if you're in the operating room doing this, you might have a scrub tech or a nurse or another provider that can do what's called follow, okay? Now they might follow by holding this tight for you while you throw the next the next uh, throw, okay? And that, that's nice because it just keeps it snug as you go, but when you're working by yourself, you gotta let it loosen up a little bit. So again, 90 degrees for our simple interrupted, coming out at 90 degrees. And then we're going to make sure that we're pulling it up through our loop so that it does the locking. Okay. Now with the next one, I'm going, we'll pretend that we're at the end of that laceration. 
okay? And I'll show you how you end and tie this type of a, uh, a suture. So one more throw. Okay, and we're gonna come up through. Oh, I forgot to show you how that we're gonna have to do one more. So there we go, one more then. I'll show you how it's tied then. So when we tie for this last throw, we're not going to bring our needle up through the loop. We're going to bring it up outside of the loop. So not in the loop, outside of the loop. So as we do that, you're gonna see that it cross, we're still gonna get that locking mechanism from above, but the but see this, uh, don't pull it all the way tight and you'll, you'll see. Now, then with, with your patient, before you tie this, you wanna make sure everything else above it looks nice and snug. So I'm gonna pull back a little bit here. You wanna work it a little bit with your pickup, make sure everything looks snug, make sure everything's lined up and that it's all gonna heal well. Okay, now we need to finish this off. So you wanna leave this loop open like this and we're going to instrument tie it against that loop. Okay, so we're going to instrument tie like this, a double. I'm gonna pull this loop a little bit tighter. I'm gonna grab inside that loop. I'm gonna pull it like this. Okay, so my knot is gonna be down here in the bottom. this. See how this is working? You kind of have to sometimes work with pulling both and then we'll do one more to finish it off for good measure. And there we go. So you might need to rework it a little bit again just to make sure that everything looks symmetric and everything is flowing well. And then we're going to take our suture scissor and we're going to cut our tails here. And so you end up with three tails on that last bit. But as you can see here, it's a nice running and self-locking, so all of this is going to hold it all together. And rather than having it, notice how it's very similar in appearance to a simple interrupted, the only thing is it's one continuous suture. So when it comes time to remove this suture, you're just gonna cut down here on the, the one end, cut the knot on the other end, and you just grab and pull and grab and pull, and it slides out in, as one long piece of suture. But that is a, sim, uh, excuse me, a continual or a running locking suture or a locking running suture. Thanks for watching.